And we're live. Welcome back to Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. I'm Steven, and today we are going to drink some whiskey, get in some whiskey, and hopefully I'm going to become better at whiskey guessing for the impending Matt Madness. Because, not going to lie, I'm a little worried about Matt Madness. A little worried, and it's a little too late to, you know, suddenly decide to start doing something like this. But, you know, it is what it is. I have not tried poor guessing or guessing whiskey or anything of that nature since, we'll say, Advent? Advent? Yeah. I legitimately have not tried doing any sort of whiskey guessing, poor guessing, things of that nature since Advent. I don't know. It just has not been, I guess, one of my priorities. Not what I'm super into anymore nowadays. It's, I don't know, kind of falling on the back burner a little bit because recently I've been getting more and more into... I don't know, just drinking whiskey, enjoying it, talking about what is whiskey, what bottles do I like, what are some concepts I'm interested in talking about. Nothing so much as about like, oh, hey, can I guess this bottle? I don't know. I'm just kind of over that phase of, or maybe not over, but I, I'm putting it on the back burner. You know, Advent was a lot of work, kind of got over doing that a little bit, but Going on Matt Madness on Friday, so got to pull out the big guns. Got to give it a little shot because I don't want to make a fool of myself on Friday. I'm going to try to win this SOB. So, ooh, man, I like Elijah Craig Small Batch. It is underrated AF. So we can run this one of two ways. Either I can do my typical guessing. By the way, cheers, Sugar Kitty. And cheers, hanging. Nice to see you, folks. Um, so let me know in chat what you guys think. So Matt Manis, I didn't come up with any like Matt Manis style questions. I don't know what the whiskeys are either. So we can do one of two things. One of two things. Either you guys can tell me what to guess about said bottles, or you know, um, I can just try to do like my typical bore guesses type stuff. But maybe I'll do it on kind of like a time limit. I don't know. Let me know what you guys want to see. I have three random samples poured from my collection by Olivia earlier today and, you know, want to get into them. You know, knock some of the cobwebs off. Good luck. Make sure you know Makers 101. I don't like Makers that much. I, I mean, correction. I don't like the normal Makers that much. But I might need to get a bottle of 101 just to, you know, Practice a little bit. The Bourbon Note sent us. Cheers, the Bourbon Note. If you guys haven't subscribed to them, I was just on there. Go subscribe. They're freaking awesome. Man, it's been, let's say, probably two months since I've even tried Elijah Craig Small Batch, and I think it's underrated as heck. I don't know why I picked this as my warm-up whiskey because it's 94 proof, but, you know, I think it's awesome. Aiden, cheers. Nice to see ya. Uh, it's what Trev, the maker's guy, lost on. Okay, well, you know, Tre I, you see, I feel like I'm kind of going more in, like, Trev's realm of how he does whiskey stuff too like because trev never does a lot of the whole like poor guesses or blind guessing i don't know why he doesn't do that so much but i feel like he's like one of the people that i follow a lot that doesn't really do any of that stuff and honestly like i'm kind of getting in that realm too i just i don't know i don't care to be the guy who can smell a bottle and be like that's elijah craig small batch i'm good i'm the best at this EC single barrel is one of the best budgets. 
take it over Buffalo Trace anytime. Yes, Aiden. I yeah, hands down, hands down. The only time I crack out Buffalo Trace is during the summer. I think Buffalo Trace is probably the best summer pour bourbon. Just because it's so it's so sweet, it's so easy. Everything's hot. So if you're doing a neat pour of anything, which usually I'm not, but if I'm doing a neat pour, it needs to be something kind of simple, a little easier. All right. Ooh, man, that is nutty. Peanut butter, nice vanillas, nice cherry. A little bit almost like a, what is that? There's like a roasty, not yet coffee, but it has this almost like, kind of like maybe like a roasty type chocolatey thing, like a, like a spicy chocolate bar, I guess. Maybe that's what we'll call it. I don't know. I like this bottle a lot. For a budget bourbon, I think this has just the perfect amount of taste, perfect amount of proof for something that's just like cheap, easy to drink, complex pour, and it checks most of the boxes I need. And it's so easy to freaking find. Agree. The imagine that. Agree, agree. Um, okay. So I need getting ready to bust out my Larceny regular for spring summer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Larceny. I don't like the normal Larceny. I mean, I don't really like the one Larceny barrel proof I've had either, but I need to, I think I need to give that brand another try. If I find another one, I might buy it, but I don't know. I don't really care much for the, the other one. Um, so comments. You know, in chat, let me know. How do you guys want me to run this thing? Because I ain't got no Matt Madness questions, so I need you all to pull those out of your ass. Okay, just gonna try to guess them then. Uh. Okay, best practice would probably be guessing proof and distiller. Okay, like state of distillation. Because so I typically go for price, proof, age, type, then if it's finished, yes or no, the bottle itself. So today what I'm going to do, so we'll get rid of price because I think price is kind of dumb. Nah, go distillery. Okay. So distillery. I'm not going to time myself because I realize we have three samples and a whole live stream. Oh, the man, the myth, the legend himself, ADHD whiskey. Cheers, man. Hey, first of all, thanks for letting me on Matt Madness. I hope I don't make myself look like a chump, but, you know, thanks. And if you guys aren't subscribed to ADHD, what the heck are you even doing? I can... Someone drop his link in chat. Go over there and freaking subscribe to him. Fix yourself. Maybe Matt should weigh in. <laughs> yeah, 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 Matt. Um, What should I try to guess? You know, what should I try to guess to give me, you know, maybe a little little bit of an edge training? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't poor guessed or tried blind guessing whiskey in probably two months. So, you know. What should I try to guess? So right now I'm doing distillery, proof, age, type, finish, and then the specific bottle itself. I'm not doing it for time because, again, I got to fill a whole live stream for this, but... Ooh. 
Man, I really like Elijah Craig's small batch. That's what I'm taking next weekend. Next weekend is my bachelor trip. And I think I'm going to go buy a bottle of that for that, for like the budget pour of the weekend. Because that is, that is, I like that one. That's a good budget pour. I feel like I don't drink that enough. I'm like screw Old Forster 100 proof. That stuff I think is better. Okay. So A, we're going to try to guess the, the proof, the age, the type, the finish, or if it's finished or not, distillery. And then the specific bottle. And this is all just me against myself. So, you know, there's not really any sort of points or who wins what. It's just going to be, you know, can I do it? So let's just get right into it. I would agree, David. Um, I do miss seeing like a 10-year-old Elijah Craig store pick because I know my Costco used to do those all the time and they were awesome, awesome. I mean, I guess it got just cool to do the... Um, ooh, I like the color on that. I do not like the fact that there's something floating in there. What the hell? That must have been in the glass or something because I washed these. She poured them. You know, whatever. Well, this is whiskey con some sort of random bug that flies in there. Guess the temperature of the room that the sample was produced in. Kitchen next to a drafty door. Man, if I could do that, I would consider myself a god. That's something only you could do. Only you could do that. Not a prayer that I'm doing that. Elijah Craig Small Batch to me is just like too many others and meh. By far, I would prefer Elijah Craig Toasted, but you don't always get that for a reasonable price. Yeah, I saw it once for like 45 bucks, and I didn't pull the trigger on it because I heard too many negative things about it, and I regret that now because... I've never seen it for anything. And I'm a huge Elijah Craig fan. I'm not a huge Heaven Hill fan, but for some reason, the Elijah Craig brand, I really like. I like their small batch. I like their barrel proofs. I like toasted products. I totally should have. <laughs> yep. Okay. So let's get into this. I'm going to try to guess these. Nose palette and then overall not that no that's not gonna work there's no way i'm guessing the age off of the nose okay so sample a Move those okay Get a little dizzy really quickly. Ooh. This is a nondescript bourbon. When you do a barrel pick for Elijah Craig now, you get a choice between 94 barrel proof. Most are choosing barrel. I mean, that's fair. I would probably do the same exact thing. Probably do the exact same thing. I don't know. I've never had a third party Elijah Craig barrel proof though. I've only, or a second party. I've never had a pick. I don't know why I said second or third party. I overcomplicated the whiskey industry. Um, the only Elijah Craig's I have are just the normal batches. Yeah, the barrel proof's going to sell better. I mean, you might get less of a profit. But who knows? I, I don't know the whiskey. I don't know the producer side of, you know, where you make more money. 
whether you sell it watered down or not watered down, I can imagine you probably make more money off of barrel proof, but you also get less yield. So, but again, you know, it's a little sexier barrel proof, barrel proof, you know, it's a little machismo, you know, it's a little sexy. It's a little muscular. Wow. This has a really nice cherry fruit, like this bright red cherry. This is nothing but sweetness. Confectionery sugar, this bright cherry note. Man. I can stick my whole nose in there, getting a slight ethanol burn, maybe like 100 proof, but again, I'm horrible at this. Hang in, let me know how that tastes. Is it the normal Wilderness Trail rye, or is it just the, uh, like, is it like a pick? Is it a shelf, or is it a pick? Because that changes things. Man, this is just sweet. This has to be some sort of, like, MGP or Buffalo Trace-esque. I'm leaning MGP, but maybe Buffalo Trace. I am also not really good at distinguishing the difference between, like buffalo trace and mgp because i think they're both really sweet i'm leaning kind of like an mgp okay awesome cheers four leaf nice to see you if you haven't you know go over there subscribe to four leaf whiskey putting out some amazing irish whiskey content man this is just smells so freaking good Okay. Drinks like a hundred proof and it's ridiculously sweet. Like super that is just sweetness. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm out of practice or something because I stopped doing reviews of whiskey and I stopped blind guessing. So I'm just, I don't hunt for flavors as much as I used to. I just kind of do like a, is it good or is it bad? Or is it like somewhere in between? Is it, you know, maybe not the best value, but it's still okay of a whiskey. I don't know. That That's kind of what I've been doing recently, which, you know, I'm not really against because that's kind of how I'm going, but... <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm going to try that. Decide is this orange or grape? On the nose, it's it's more of like a... It's just like a red fruit, like a cherry, maybe apple. I lean towards the citrus side. But that is just so sweet, so easy. There's a little bit of like a hug to it, but not too much. I'm leaning Buffalo Trace. I'm not getting a huge honey-esque note. But it drinks like a hundred proof Buffalo Trace product. Different in a good way or bad way. Some Buffalo Trace has cherry instead. That can be Barton or Sazerac. It can be the Barton side of Sazerac. Okay. It's so fruity on the nose though. Like the nose 
is so lively and fruity and the palate is a little bit flat it's a little lackluster it might be a tad bit on the nutty side yeah i don't know now i'm thinking maybe oh man you see this is why i stopped doing this because there's so many little things in there that can change it blind guessing things it's a pain in the ass i get stressed out because i don't like being wrong and i need to start doing this more often again there's a nice grapey, almost banana-y fruitiness and red fruits. Like, it's just very sweet on the nose. And on the palate, it's just... Is that 100 proof? So sometimes I drink it, get a little bit of a hug. Sometimes I drink it and it drinks like water. This. There is some nuttiness in there. So I got it zeroed down to three different distilleries and I have about one little sip left. It's MGP, Buffalo Trace, or it's, uh, what am I trying to think of? Um, Barton. I don't think it's Barton. I think it's MGP or Buffalo Trace. I think the biggest question, is it 100 proof or is it 90 proof? Because sometimes it drinks like water and other times it has a little faint hug on it, which makes me think 100. Okay, you know, it's going to go, I think it's 90 proof. I think the age on this SOB is going to be somewhere around six years old. I think it's a bourbon. I don't think it's finished. And then here's where it changes. Yeah, yeah, it's there's it's it becomes a stressful nightmare to me. Um, so I'm, I'm leaning either Buffalo Trace or MGP. I think it's MGP. And then I'm going to go Smoke Wagon Small Batch. I mean, we'll see. We will see. Unfortunately, the answers are all on one note, so we're going to have to go through this, and then we can reflect back on that. And I already drank the whole sample. I don't know. My notes on that... So no matter what I can say, it's it's a really simple, easy whiskey, bourbon. It's for sure a bourbon. There's no way it's not a bourbon, but I mean, there is 100% a way it's not a bourbon. That being said, it had a really nice nose. The palate was a little flat, little empty, and a little on the thin side. It drank very watery, but it did have a slightly robust nose. That being said, I've only been drinking this, you know, and some um, Wilderness Trail bottled in Bond, the Rye Mash Bill before this. So, you know, robust. And I wasn't really super nosing things either. So robust could be a, you know, not the best descriptive term. No lit in... I need to let this glass sit a few and give it another sniff. Is it is it like define the funk? What kind of funk? 
Like, is it a gross funk? Is it a good funk? But yeah, that's that's kind of why I've gotten away from it because I think it makes it kind of more of a like whiskey. I don't. I like the competitive side of it, but when I'm just doing it by myself, it turns it into kind of like a chore almost. I don't know if that makes sense. Like when I'm just doing it, like, so I'm not going to lie. Advent calendar kind of kicked my ass a little bit. I got very over it. I mean, 24 days straight of you just poor guessing things is, man, it's, it's rough. Like right now, I don't feel like this is a chore, but, um, especially during the whole advent series i kind of was like just burnt out with doing all this poor guessing stuff so i kind of got away from it but we need to get back we need to get back in the game because i want to win friday or at least i want to perform well enough to make it past friday i want to win baby i want to win baby let's go Spawn batch tastes some sort of walnut-y to me. To me, it's like a high-quality peanut butter. Here, we're just going to... Oh, yeah. A, so flat. So flat compared to Elijah Craig um, small batch. I'm I'm sticking with my whole 90 proof six year old bourbon that's not finished. I'm thinking it's smoke wagon small batch, it might be Buffalo Trace. I don't know. It has to be one of those. I consider those to be kind of like summer pours where they're like lower because I don't have a lot of low proof stuff, so it's usually around the whole like 90 proof range um, for like low proof for me. And it needs to be something that's just like a super down home plate. And I can't think of very many pours I have that maybe Dickel bit or the Dickel bourbon is pretty nondescript and easy. I don't know. I don't know. Hang in. I not going to lie. I did that last year and i have some bitching elijah craig socks i wouldn't i mean they're not that great but like you know if i wore socks to work i'd look really freaking fly but i do work from home see this one has another lovely nose a lovely nose a lovely nose Proof age. Art by Sparkle. Hello, cheers. Uh, so Californian. So Californian. There we go. Why did I make that hard to say? Uh, cheers. Nice to see you, man. This one is nuttier. Nuts. Nutty SOB. This has like some beamy funk on it. Yeah, that's... I'm just going to write down in my notes, nuts. This shit's going to have nuts in it. Yeah, Elijah Craig small batch would probably be the first suggestion I would give to a new bourbon drinker. Yeah, I I think it's a little on the nuttier side for me, personally. I I usually, when, anytime, I mean, I did a video of this like probably like two or three weeks ago because for some reason, I don't know what it is, but I'm having a lot of like friends, coworkers, some family members who are like getting into whiskey because they're kind of moving away from beer and they're like, Hey, what's a good whiskey to kind of 
step into. So I made a video on it and I kind of, I say in the line of like Buffalo Trace, I mean, there's a reason Buffalo Trace is so hard to find and so allocated. It's for those people who aren't really into bourbon, but like the idea of being in a bourbon and it's just so approachable. So I lean on that MGP stuff and kind of like double oak things, things that are super, oh, hey buddy. Uh, things that are, are like on the sweeter side, but not overly sweet. Like Makers, I think Makers is a good one. To me, peanuts versus walnuts. I think I think Elijah Creek Small Batch is more of a peanutty thing, like a nat natty peanut butter. <laughs> I, I will eventually do that blend. I need to buy a seventeen eighty three again. I ran out. I really should have saved it. I just. You know, with the way the world's going, I'm not making a lot of money myself, so I haven't bought a bottle of, you know, 1783 in a hot minute. Um, I don't know when the next time I'm going to. I will seriously do that the next time I do that, but I don't know when that's going to be. This is nutty, though. There's awesome. some nuts in this. I'm for sure leaning beam. I'm just going to write distillery beam. There's no way this is not beam. But yeah, eventually I will do that. That is for sure on the hit list. There's some nice fruitiness in this one. I'm thinking this is probably higher proof. That is just stale. That is proofy, stale peanuts. Going from A to B is so polarizing. It is like A was like all the light, fruity, fun flavors. And like B was like, you like some nuts, boys? Let's go. Yeah, that is so freaking nutty. It's nutty. It's higher proof. Going down the thought of, you know, we're just going to write it down. Proof 120, age nine years old. Type bourbon. Finished? No. Bottle? Nine year knob. I don't, it's just so nutty. It's so nutty. So it can either be. OGD 114 or knob. And I feel like it has, it has like 120 plus proof. Like it's drying. I have no moisture in my mouth right now. Proof stale peanuts. Yeah. Ooh. The one bookers I have was the Lumberyard batch from last year. And it is a lot brighter than this, at least from memory. It's more on the fruitier side, a little less younger, because this is dark. Yeah, I think it's because I don't have... Well, I have, a, I have a pick of that, but I don't think it's the pick. I think it's just the nine-year-old... One. Although picks are at mostly nine years old nowadays. Eric Isaacson. Cheers, man. Nice to see you. Yeah, I'm I'm going with B is literally. There's no way that's not Elijah Craig. That is, or not Elijah Craig. Ooh. Eh, maybe I'm trying to convince myself. I don't think it's... It doesn't ring to me as an Elijah Craig. No. It doesn't have that peanut buttery note that I get. It's more of like a stale peanut. Man, I am kind of cheating, though. This is something I'm for sure not going to be able to do. I'm at madness. But... Yeah, that, that's the only perks of knowing exactly what whiskeys you can do. You can kind of 
like be like, oh, it's either this or this. I think that's a Knob Creek nine year old though, because that is so nutty. It makes me think of Beam. There is a possibility it could be Heaven Hill, but I think that just is me overthinking the heck out of this. Although knowing Olivia, she would for sure pick an Elijah Craig just to hear me shit talk it. Because she would love to watch me shit talk my favorite like whiskey out there. Not my favorite. It's probably my favorite readily available or readily available ish bourbon. This one seems very on the light side. Ooh, that's not fair. So we went from something that's proofy and nutty to like C is just so flat on the nose. C is C has some weird funk to it. There's like a dried hay note to it. This smells for sure like another bourbon though. This is like a bourbon with some weird funk to it. There's like a dry hay to it. Yeah, what are we drinking today, by the way? I usually ask that, but it's been it's been a strange live stream that you know, I haven't asked anyone that. What are y'all drinking today? What are you drinking? Do you like me sitting off centered on the camera? I was sitting off centered on the camera because I'm closer to my computer, which is right there for my earphones for the last live stream I was on. And, you know, I just kind of stayed there. I kind of dig it, though. It changes things a little bit. I can, like, do some weird stuff. go okay c not here than squirrel poop i have no idea why you're eating squirrel poop hanging but i feel like you should for sure talk to your doctor about that this is weird wooden bill i don't know if it's i don't have a wooden bill i used to have a bunch of wooden bills and i used to really dig them but I think that might be because I wanted to like a whiskey from Washington because that's where um, Olivia, my fiance's family is from. So I just kind of wanted to, I don't know, like one. But then I found Westland and I absolutely love the heck out of their American single mouth. I will not be drinking any other West or not Westland. Um, Washing, yeah, yeah, Washington products that aren't Westland. I mean, that's not true. I'll drink any whiskey from anywhere, but that's kind of my go to nowadays instead of Wooden Bill. Not bad. I've heard the A123 is actually really good, and I love that naming A123. Ah, oh, man, that's just so copacetic for me. A123. This one's weird. I don't know if it's like a funk or a finishing, but there's something just funky about this one. There's some weird like stale hay. Nuttiness almost. Ooh, there's like a buttery popcorn note. Around like a hundred proof. I don't know what that is. I like it, but I have no freaking clue what that is. What the hell? 
Woodenville, a potential bit of acetone. Yeah, I, the only reason I, I mean, not the only reason, obviously, I just explained one of the reasons, but one of the other reasons I got Woodenville originally, I had a barrel pick because a guy at Total Wine, and this is like when I was just starting in a whiskey, um, a guy at Total Wine convinced me to buy one of the, their barrel picks there. And it was good, but the other like Woodenville products I tried after that just did not quite meet that expectation for me. There's some, there's some weird funky notes that make me lean like finish, but not quite finished on this one. Yeah, it's rye heavy. There's some nice rye, some spicier herbal notes on it. It's very sweet too. Is that four roses? Yeah, there's some nice rye notes in there. It does have a bit of proof to it too. Man, this one has me perplexed. I think I know what it is. And this might be me wanting to guess myself into it, but I have no idea what the age of that would be. Let's just... Go six years old, type bourbon. Finish, no. Distillery. I'm going four roses. Then I'm doing four roses select, the small batch select. Because it has these very like rye-esque notes on it that I rem like the only bourbon I consider to be rye-esque or rye-heavy, like high rye, is four roses. Four roses single barrel is very rye bourbon. And four roses small batch drinks like a rye almost like a really high corn lie like like a barely legal and i'm talking like in like significantly legal rye so without further ado where did i put oh there we go okay so here are the answers to it on this little piece of paper that olivia folded and shoved underneath this mat Huh. Well, proofometer, not in good shape. Not in good shape at all, mate. Okay, so I did guess. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so we'll just go down A. A was Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare. So I do get the 90 proof. I do not get the six year old. I get the bourbon. I get the not finished. I do not get the MGP and I do not get that. So I got plus three. For that, three out of six. I think three out of six is, I consider that to be a huge win. And guess, I got the proof. Um, B, on the other hand, was Jim Beam Single Barrel. So I did guess Beam properly, but my proof was off a little bit. I... <laughs> Uh, touch of floral to it. I, I got like, it was very herbal and kind of florally. Select has one of the floral recipes to it. To me, it's, it gets so minty. I guess now that I think about it, this one's not minty, but. Oh, wait, that is Elijah Craig. Maybe just going from B to C, it blew out my proofometer. 
Because now that I drink like Elijah Craig and I went to that, I was like, oh, that's for sure not 102 proof. That is um, way less than that. But so for B, it was Jim Beam Single Barrel, which is 108 proof. So I'm not getting that 120 um, age wise. Let me see if it has an age on it. Okay, so I know it's 108 proof. Okay, no information on that, but so I'll just say no to age because we can't verify it. Yes to that. Yes to so. And it's not that. Okay, so I got plus three for that for guessing bourbon. It's not finished, and the fact that it, it was beam. So I, I nailed the distillery. I'll take that as a win. Nailing the distillery. A, I was pretty close to the actual bottle. The only things I did miss was the age and the actual... It was literally either that or Buffalo Trace, although I was going for the normal Buffalo Trace, not Eagle Rare, because I didn't think it was quite there, but, you know, I guess it's also been a while since I've had Eagle Rare. Um, and then C, the last one actually, ironically, was what I guessed A was. So it was smoke wagon, small batch. So it was a 90 proof MGP blend. Um, so it wasn't 102 proof. It's non age stated. It was a bourbon. It's not finished. It is not four roses and it's not four roses, small batch flex. So I got plus two. So today I had a total of plus eight points. Out of a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, six times three is 12, 18 points. So eight out of 18. I mean, not great points, but not horrible either. I mean, obviously, Matt Madness is going to be way more stressful, way more intense. I'm just going to have to go with my gut. But I, I think... Honestly, if you get close to around half in this whole blind guessing thing, and if you think like it's like, oh, hey, you suck because you didn't do that, you clearly have not had, like, you clearly don't have a collection of like 150 some bottles where someone has randomly pulled one off and been like, here, guess this bitch and expected you to actually guess it. It is ridiculously freaking hard to do that. And, you know, there are certain things that are like easier to guess, like proof. Age, I'm just starting to learn how to do that. Um, type, relatively easier to guess. Is it finished? There, That's something that's also kind of like age and finish. Like there's things that kind of like lead you in that direction. But in the end of the day, for me at least, I'm not world's top whiskey taster. So to me, it's kind of a crapshoot. Um, distillery, I think if you get the bottle right, you're probably going to get the distillery right. Or if you have like a general gist of like, I know for a fact that this is a Buffalo Trace bourbon that's 100 proof, you could do that. And then you just pick whatever one you think it is. But, you know, there's no promise any which way. I don't know. These are all hard to guess. That's what I that's what I took away from this. Blind guessing bottles are hard. But yeah, so I... I got the family of one right, and I got the proof of one right. And that's about it. But I, I I don't consider that a total loss. Like this, this is not a great performance either, but it's not like a this is I would call this an average performance. I'm okay with this, you know. Like, I don't know. So for those of you who like do this, so one, as a viewer, that's my question. Um, as a viewer, what are your expectations for people who, you know, blindly guess whiskeys? Like what, what's your expectations um, for them to be able to get? And also like, Oh shit, where was I going for that? Man, I'm a little tipsy. Um, uh, not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Um, 
the bourbon now in the house cheers thanks for coming on coming in hanging out um mods if you all wouldn't mind dropping you know here i'm gonna give you the power of god so you can drop your own link um let's see add as managing moderator Ooh, i can add like people as like special moderators and people as like non-special moderators i'll add oh i can't even add that huh i don't understand any of this stuff army brain brain on some other shit though yep it's okay yeah yeah i was gonna do like a so since i named this like boot camp i was gonna do one i thought alec was gonna be here so i was gonna have alec dress in my drill sergeant hat and i was gonna have him uh kind of like put me in the push-up position and knife hand me and have me like drink whiskey or something i don't know i was gonna go super elaborate for the thumbnail and then he couldn't end up making it so you know kind of sucks um yeah, great thumbnail idea. But yeah, army brain. Oh, you were Marines though, right? That's not saying much, brother. Don't stress, just enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I have a tendency to overthink things and kind of like build things up in my head and like make them more than they actually even remotely ever should be. So... You know, and I'm a competitive person. I want to win, even though, like, I don't, like, I don't, like, how should I put this? I do care if I win because I do want to win, obviously. But, like, I know I'm not the world's top whiskey taster, so I'm not, no, I'm not going to win, but I want to freaking win. I'm just a competitive person in nature. But, yeah, I'm going to, I'm just going to try to enjoy it. I mean, Matt is literally one of the greatest people in the whiskey tube community. So I'm honestly just going to enjoy live streaming with him for a little bit. If there was one thing you could practice, try to get proof. That's one area you can always get points. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Pull out your stress card. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Got to go to YouTube to see the emoji. Love you too, Jack. Uh, uh, Jack Jones. I don't know why my dyslexia totally put a J and like replace it with your Z. Uh, Zach Jones, love you too, man. Love you. Uh, so back to ADHD's question. What temperature was a room that the samples were poured? Temperature? Sixty nine degrees Fahrenheit. And that's actually probably accurate because that's pretty much what our um, what our house has been at because it's been around like sixties and seventies, and we don't have the heater on here because well, um, you know, saving money and also our heater somehow doesn't work. But we also live in Arizona, so we really honestly don't need it to work. Don't tell Olivia I said that, but like we really don't need a freaking heater. Um, but yeah, so it's probably around 69, 66 to 69. Which I'm so glad. I it's such a nice privilege to not have my whiskey in like a garage or something. Cause I know I've been watching like some people's content and I know that like people who live in like cold climates are over here sitting like this and like trying to warm their whiskey up before they like do things and i don't have to deal with that i just have to you know pay a really expensive cooling bill during the summer because you know it gets hot in this bitch. uh you could 100 percent beat sean easily yeah that's true that I, I don't know about that i mean they do this for a living i do this because kind of like a hobby <laughs> Honestly, not going to lie, this blend of the Jim Beam Single Barrel, Smoke Wagon Small Batch, and Elijah Craig Small Batch. We'll, we'll make it so y'all can see them fairly. Um, in unknown quantities, not bad. The MGP kind of balances out that nuttiness of the beam.
Yeah. That MGP does have some nice, like, robust herbal notes on it, though. Because it added some nice, like, herbality, herbalness, herbaceousness um, to the palate that wasn't previously there. Because those other two were very nutty. And adding that MGP. MGP is not supposed to be herbal, though, right? So, here, I guess this will be another crowdsource question. What do you, you all typically get between Buffalo Trace and MGP? Because I know Buffalo Trace, to me, I get more of like a powdered sugariness. And the MGP, I get more of like an herbal quality, but not like a super herbal. Like, it's just like a spicier Buffalo Trace. It's like spicy Buffalo Trace. I mean, I like MGP way better than Buffalo Trace. But to me, it's just like a spicier. You know, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Buffalo Trace. Smoke Wagon and or MGP. And maybe it's best if that's just it. We're going to find the difference in these two. Here, I'm going to get centered. Ugh. Yeah, this is all like back behind the scenes level stuff that I normally wouldn't do in front of you all. But, you know, I'm a little tipsy and, you know, it's been a week. It, it's always been a week every time I do this live stream, though. I don't know. So... Real question, another real question. I, I say that too much. I'm a freaking idiot. Um, how often do you all drink? So arguably, if you're on this live stream, you like to drink whiskey. How often do... Ooh, I can add the eight-year-old Dickel bourbon. I'll do that. Um, but how often do you all drink? Because I've been drinking way less recently. You know, I've been I've been kind of pumping the brakes on the let's call it alcoholism. Trying to get in shape for my wedding and you know because of that I feel like I've been kind of falling off the whiskey a little bit and kind of losing my palate a wee bit. Not that I'm against that because of, you know, balance in life. Because my palate's still just fine. But, you know, how often do you guys drink? I'm gonna go get Dickel. The imagine that cheers um time to get the kids to bed cheers man uh thanks for coming in hanging out appreciate you coming in hanging out you know have a fun time taking the kids to bed before every evening usually just one yeah, that's my issue hanging so i've forced myself to do only drinking on the live streams and then or so drinking during content related things so like last week, I drank Tuesday and Wednesday because I was on the bourbon bars and then my channel on Wednesdays. Um, and then Friday and Saturdays are my drinking days because it's a weekend. Celebrate, baby. Um, but I've been staying away from drinking so much. So I'm only trying to drink three at most four times a week. I was for a while there drinking like once a day. But like by once a day, I would mean like I would drink a few pours at the end of the day. Because I don't know, maybe I have a problem with like moderation. Maybe that's the bigger question, but. Three is salty lettuce, which I feel like I've for sure seen you in the chat before, but thanks for coming and hanging out. Love the freaking name, salty lettuce. Uh, three to four days a week for me depends on the mood. Yeah, I'm like, 
I think that's like, that's the healthy time, like three to four days a week. I think that's a healthy balance, working out, staying in shape. Like, I think that's going to be my healthy balance, but I mean, obviously I'm still working on it. It's a uh, ever growing work, but every time I drink, I tend to like for sure drink more than one. So that's, that's why I have to give myself like today's either a drinking day or it's not a drinking day. Cause if it's a drinking day, I'm freaking drinking. Not like so much. So I'll have like two to three pours, but I can't like, you know, I can't drink every single day, two to three pours and still kind of function. Whiskey gets expensive. You know, there's also some saving aspects. Okay. So we're going to try to determine the difference between these three bottles. I'm going to just tear them apart against each other. Because these are all 90 proof bottles that are, I mean, the Dickel, it's kind of, because this is an off profile Dickel, so I don't really think the Dickel belongs in this as much, but you know, it's Dickel. It's, it is whatever. I get my son to, I don't know why I paused there to read that for so long. I get my son to pick up a half ounce pour blind four to five days a week just to exercise and keep my palate up. Yeah, that's true. I You do have to continuously drink. Like, I don't think I could take a whole week off and keep my palate where it's at. I feel like you have to kind of drink at least a few times a week to keep your palate acclimated to the alcohol. Cause some of you will remember when I came back from drill sergeant school, um, was that in March or April, I think it was April of last year, maybe even, uh, later than that. But man, I, I went straight back to live streaming like a week after I got back and I could not drink whiskey straight. I could not drink whiskey straight. It was rough for me. So I feel like you have to, given that whole time I took two months off of whiskey. So that's an extreme situation. But I feel like you have to constantly keep drinking whiskey in order to keep your palate up. Oh, there we go. I missed this somehow. I only drink for reviews in January and February, but normally a small pour four days a week. Okay, yeah, so you're even better than I am because I just have like a drinking days and non-drinking days. Like the, during the week, I have to like pay attention to what I'm drinking. But like on Friday and Saturdays, especially if I got nothing to do, like so like this Friday and this Saturday, Olivia's on her bachelorette party. I'm staying home watching the dogs. I'm going on Matt Madness. Man, Friday's probably going to be rough. Because I'm either celebrating because I did really well on Matt Madness or I'm drinking because I didn't do very good on Matt Madness. Nah, it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to have a fun time no matter what. And I'll be drinking no matter what. Let's be honest. Um, but yeah, that's why I do. Maybe I have a lack of self-control. So that's why I drink. Or that's why I'm giving myself days that I'm allowed to do it or not do it because once I start doing that, I can't really, I'm not great at controlling myself. Not, did not mean to get philosophical on y'all, but you know, this is so ridiculously sweet though. Buffalo Trace, again, I said it previously on this, a fan freaking tastic summer pour whiskey. Like it is so sweet, so easy. I've not tried the Z-Biotic stuff yet. I'm too poor to try the Z-Biotics. The only way you're seeing me try Z-Biotics is if they sponsor me. And even then, I might turn down a sponsorship just on the fact that they are ridiculously expensive. Like, I'm just... I don't know... I'm too poor for that stuff. 
Because those things aren't cheap. Not even remotely cheap. Man, this is sweet. I do... I get a little bit of like an orangey note in here though. Like it's, I'm looking for a grape. How much are they? I thought they were like 50 bucks for like a four or five pack. I could be wrong. Please let me know if I'm wrong. I really, I was told by someone in passing through the whiskey community that they were ridiculously overpriced and to not even bother looking into them. So I just, didn't here. Let me I'll square this away right now. Let's see. Oh man. Z biotics. Z biotics if it the pre alcohol. Okay, so a 12 pack, which is the bulkiest. So okay, let's do a six pack. Six is 60 bucks. A three pack is 36. So that is, so for if you just want to buy three, it's going to be 33 a piece. Or wait, 13 a piece. Dear Lord. Yeah, like I said, I'm a little intoxicated. A six pack, it's $10 a piece, and a 12 pack is 108. So it'll be around, just quick math, I think that's what, like eight bucks a piece. And that, that's from their website, so there might be cheaper places to find it because more often than not, I find that, you know, things are cheaper on their, you know, on like third-party sites than their actual sites. I found that when I take a several-week break from bourbon, I come back with a newfound enjoyment on the lower and stuff great whiskey to keep budgets in check yeah that's true when i when i came back from drill sergeant school which again that's the only time i've ever like taken like a pronounced like break from whiskey because i drink at least once a week on here even if i took the whole weekend off which let's be honest i don't i, I don't um but i found that i did not care for angel's envy before that but that whole time i had about like three quarters of a bottle of angel's envy that was a bottle that got me back into whiskey because it was like low proof it was easy it was approachable it was everything i needed in that moment okay back to buffalo trace my favorite summer pour it's just so sweet there's like a, a kind of a grapey note but also kind of like a like an orange aid note. There's this funky kind of like vanilla, like this pronounced vanilla bean note, I guess. I've always called it like a hay-esque note, but I guess it's more of like a like an unfiltered straight from like the bean, like you scraped it off of the bean vanilla. Like that is a very intense raw vanilla. It's not quite vanilla extract where it's like so overwhelmingly potent, but it's it's like this raw unfiltered vanilla flavor. That's very, very strong. Oh, we're... Here, let me go full screen to make sure that we are here, bear with me. Okay, sorry, we started crashing. Our Wi-Fi is not strong enough to support me live streaming and Olivia FaceTiming and she was FaceTiming some of her friends. So, you know, had to take care of that. Um, but yeah, there, that is just straight like apples and vanillas. This has some nice spice to it. I'm dude, I'm, this might be an underrated bottle in my collection. So I really like this. I might need to put this up against like 
some of the other daily drinkers. I know when I did the review, I said it was kind of on par, but man, after today's blind session and going from Buffalo Trace to that, like this is such a more pronounced herbal, spicier, more exciting whiskey than Buffalo Trace ever could be. Like, I mean, subsequently, it does make it a little bit less approachable, but I think it's better to be a little bit less approachable. I still am wondering if I should get the new Jack Daniels bonded. I saw your review. I didn't pick up the triple mash and have, I did. Oh, um, so take this with a grain of salt. My thoughts on JD bonded non-blind. I think it's ridiculously sweet. It's too banana too sweet. I think it's just not a great balanced product. Blindly, I seem to rate it very high. My proofometer is a little off, but I seem to think it's like a solid like 1792 single barrel or maybe even like an old Forester um, 1920 sometimes. Like it's very case dependent, but since I've had it in a few blinds and I've kind of learned how to pick it out, I think it's, I think it's okay. If you like Jack Daniels a lot, I think you're going to like it. If you don't care for Jack Daniels extreme, like sweetness and banana I don't think you're going to care for it. I did a, my live or the, what, what am I trying to say? Uh, my, so I did a giant blind for my best whiskeys of 2022. Uh, like not, not on this channel. I just kind of disseminated the answers of said blind. Cause it took me hours to do that. Um, but that came like last in the whiskeys I liked. Cause there was one that I thought was horrible, undrinkable, like borderline drain pour. And that obviously lost completely. But second place for me, as far as like the second whiskey that I thought was like the least exciting was that JD Bonded. And I did that blind as well. So I don't know. Sometimes blinding things is complicated. That's why it's hard to guess things blind because it's so based on how you're feeling. What are you interested in that day? Like, what is it? Um, So I've tried Wild Turkey 101 rye. I have not yet gotten an Elijah Craig rye. I heard the Elijah Craig rye was not exciting. Wild Turkey 101 rye, I think is awesome. I think it's awesome. It's a really good budget rye. I mean, the Wild Turkey rye products, I think, are wildly underrated. I think the Rare Breed is fantastic. I think the 101 is fantastic. I just haven't gotten around to the Elijah Craig rye itself yet. But yeah, so as far as Jack Daniels bonded, I think it's I think it's a solid purchase for the thirty bucks. Am I gonna buy it again? Mm, probably not. Maybe who knows? I don't know. There's some bottles that I absolutely love that I finished and I haven't bought it again. And there's bottles that I didn't really care for that I seemingly buy always. It's just depending on the value where I can find them, whatnot, things of that nature. The triple mash, on the other hand, I think is fantastic, and I'm so excited for their i think they're doing what a 90 proof single malt this year i'm gonna buy the ever living crap out of that bottle i'm probably gonna buy three or four i i'll probably buy one and then if it's good i'm gonna go back and buy like three or four of those bottles because i think those are gonna be amazing yeah so compared to buffalo traces nose <laughs> Is it same level of sweetness? There's a little bit more of like a red fruity characteristic and a more herbal quality, like for sure more rye impact. That smoke wagon is just damn good. This smoke wagon might be my favorite of these three. Sean, cheers. Nice to see you, man. 
Yeah. That Buffalo Trace just has a pronounced like vanilla. Vanilla. Like it's so intense. Ooh. This is going to be an exciting one. Ugh, my nose is starting to get a little runny too. Yeah, what's everyone drinking tonight, by the way? No, I asked that previously, but it's been a it's been a minute. I'm a little bit more, and by more, I mean way more intoxicated than I normally am when I'm live streaming. So, you know, things are getting hard to keep track of. But Smoke Wagon, MGP. Oh. Dickel, eight-year-old bourbon. I don't know, the Dickel eight-year-old just kind of seems a little flat. Like the smoke wagon, it has a sweetness and like this herbally brightness. Like there's a nice vanilla, a nice little bit of like a rye heavy impact. And this one kind of shares similar qualities, but here maybe it's... So it kind of has those rye-esque flavors, but honestly, this seems like a way more toned down version of this. At least nose to nose. Like it just seems like a flat version. Like this is, so if we're talking like, say these are soda cans. So this is it like right after you crack the soda can open. And then this is after you let it sit for like an hour. Like it's like it still has that same flavor profile, but it's just not like as exciting or bubbly as it originally was. It is very herbally. It might j be just because we've only consumed Buffalo Trace, Jim Beam, and MGP this night so like maybe it just seems like the most herbal whiskey ever i'm really i'm gonna have to drink tomorrow i'm gonna have to break my three-day rule and i'm gonna have to drink tomorrow to kind of you know stay competitive because that is super herbal yeah and that has a weird we'll call it the stale nuttiness, the solid cherry. Like it, it seems like an in between between beam and MGP on the palate. Like it shares the qualities of that, like nuttiness, and then a little bit of like a cherry note, stale nuttiness, and some solid, solid, like kind of like an MGP blend screwing around for a while trying to figure out the audio solutions for mash and metal <laughs> what are you having issues with sean oh man my right nostril is just leaking oh my god here i'm just gonna sorry guys that was gross but no, no, Sean, what are you, what are you having issues with? Let me help. You know, I'm taking the hat off. Don't even care. Don't even care. Wait on you, Sean. So audio stuff is a little difficult. So when I originally gotten the xlr like mics and whatnot because so i bought i have two of these sure mics i have one right over there because that's for like alec or like guests or whatever um because i originally bought that one to be like a usb interface one and then this one was supposed to be the xlr which yeah we're getting super nerdy sorry guys it, we're no longer talking about whiskey it's audio equipment now baby um 
but I got a, what is it? It's a audio interface. It was like an expensive quality audio interface. Spent like 150 bucks or something on it. I don't remember what audio interface it was, but I had an issue with it because as it was pushing audio to the, so there were two channels because I need it to support two XLR microphones. So because there were two channels on it, it was reading it as one was the left side of audio and one was the right side of audio. So it wasn't like actually reading things properly and there's settings to like fix that in the long run, but it just seems so much more complicated. So I just bought a mixer myself. My share Spotify through StreamYard is not sure the audio. I really need it to share the audio. Okay. Well, that might be more complicated because it's systems that want to maintain the integrity of their IP against each other. MRG Money 216. I've never seen you. Uh, cheers. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Are you doing anything for the Super Bowl? Me personally, no, which is ironic because the Super Bowl's in Arizona and I'm not planning on doing anything. I don't know. So this is the weekend that my fiance is going on her bachelorette party. So it's pretty much just me by myself. I might do something. I don't know. My little sister might be throwing some sort of party, but... You know, I don't know. I, I, man, you're just making me realize I need to figure out something to do on freaking Sunday. I'm assuming the Super Bowl Sunday, right? I don't know. I'm not the biggest sports guy, but I always show up to like the big deal things. Apple Music shares fine, but Spotify does not get. It has to be some sort of like security policy then. Like, I, I bet there's probably some sort of code that just, like, it, inside of Spotify where it's, like, if user tries to share via third-party applications, then don't play audio or so, something like that, I would assume. I don't know. I'm not a coder myself because I hate coding, but I bet there's some sort of code that runs in the background that stops you from being able to share things like that because well they like to maintain the integrity of their own ip and not being able to share it easily yeah that's fair that's fair that's why i'm not on spotify because i have apple news Ooh, and we're knocking over glenn's because my neck freaking itches um you know i so my, my fiance, she's on Spotify because she had Spotify before we met. And then I'm on Apple because my mom pays for the Apple subscription and she just shares it through the family function or whatever the heck. So I don't have to pay for shit. So I'm just on Apple because, you know, I'm a freeloading piece of shit. Um, so like I haven't gone to Spotify just because I don't really see the value in me spending more money. You know, healthcare. Let's get into that. Oh, man. I'm 25 years old and I'm turning 26 in. I mean, I know when I'm turning 26, but I'm turning 26 in like four months. Um, my fiance is going to turn 26 in about a month, you know. So I did the responsible thing, signed up for TRICARE through the military because I can do that. Um, turns out healthcare, even through the military, not cheap, not cheap. Being an adult freaking sucks. I know this is super tangential to the whiskey, but, you know, life, life. That being said, this though. This stuff, really good. I mean, at least compared to these other three, like this has some real character. If I had to choose one out of these three, this is like significantly higher 
this one is a little bit higher than this decal just because this doesn't have a flavor profile I happen to really enjoy, but the dickel, I just think the dickel is very lackluster because the Buffalo Trace, even it has its like flavor profile and it goes 110% down that road where the dickel just, I don't know, it's just kind of flat. Like not much to say about that. It's very cherry. I don't know, man. I have a massive playlist on Spotify. It would be problematic to remake all those. Yeah, that's that's a pain in the ass. Remember back in the day where you used to have to transfer your contacts manually from phone to phone before there were like backups and importing and exporting things? Man, I hated that. I had one of those. Oh, I had one of those Windows phones that they don't make anymore, but it was kind of like the Windows 8 where it was all a bunch of tiles and shit. I hated that phone so much. And then I transferred to an iPhone and I had to manually add all of my contacts from that because there was just no good way to export them and import them. Although nowadays, I feel like technology is caught up where different systems, there's like, there might be like a very complicated way to transfer, like export and import things. But I feel like there has to be a way, like even like Google Chrome and Edge, you know, you can export your bookmarks from Google Chrome and import them into Edge. And they're different file types and whatnot, but they still import properly. Like, I feel like, Systems are built nowadays where you can still, you know, transfer one to the other with ease. Yeah. Well, I was just speaking more on like the adulting aspect, Sean, like healthcare. Yeah, it is important, but like F being an adult, I would rather still be in the process of where I can still mooch off of other people and just spend all my extra money on whiskey. So now I have to make smart decisions in my life. Good times, brother. Yeah. I like MGP, guys. I used to hate on MGP, but MGP might be the shit. Yeah, this is just a really good... Slightly spicy, sweet, fruity whiskey. Like it's honestly, for a low proof whiskey, it is very balanced. Leans a little bit on the spicy side, but that might just be obviously compared to these other whiskeys. I like that. I like that one a lot. Man. I think I need to look into MGP a little bit more. Oh, so, so far, like the end of 2022 and the start of 2023, I've been realizing two things. I want to lean even more heavily into American single malts, as well as I think I like MGP a lot. I don't know. That's what I'm taking away from tonight. Tomorrow, I need to practice on guessing proofs. I just need a guess on guess proofs. That is legitimately it. Ooh, excuse me. Um, and I like MGP. I really like MGP. That being said, that is a wrap for today's video. I'm getting a little bit intoxicated, so we don't need to keep this thing running. Uh, appreciate all of you all for coming in, hanging out. Freaking awesome. Um, you know, go ahead and subscribe to everyone who showed up today. Uh, appreciate their support a ton, like literally so much more than you can think. Um, that is a wrap for today's live stream, though. We will see you next week. Same time, probably. Cheers, y'all. We'll see you later.